Hi everyone. Hi mom. Okay, you guys requested it, so here I am again. Uh, I thought it would be, well, my next project I wanted it to, to be a envelope journal again. Uh, but this time um, I wanted to show you how to adjust an envelope that you already have. Uh, I do not have any more. I have one left, I think, which I'm saving for something else. Um, one envelope left that would fit, you know, this folded in half, which would be six across and then eight and a half down or eight down or something like that. Um, but I have a 10 inch one, 10 by something or other, 13 maybe. Anyway, I wanted to cut it down and I wanted to try something a little different. So I ended up opening up the end here. So I cut it down its fold line there and then I scored it an inch and a half up and took off one side so that this side will now flip over. I will glue that down. I've also decided that I'm not going to have a pocket. I just want this as a cover. I don't want pockets in it, at least in the cover itself. I mean, probably the project itself will have pockets. So I did that much, which is, you know, easy to do. Uh, and the only thing I suggest is that you angle cut it a little bit on the edge. Uh, I could go even more. I am going to put paper almost to the edge. There will be a little bit of a border. So I'll probably come in and just angle this, um, well, like this. This one's already angled a little bit, but I just want to take off more so that it's quite angled. And that way the, cov the uh, paper will cover that really well, won't show as badly. So I'm just going, you know, right to the corner there. And I'll do the same on this side because this is going to be flipped up. So that'll all be glued down. But before I do that, I wanted to do my Tyvek in the middle. And I wanted to show you the papers I'm using. Um, this is from, I believe it's from Dreams Tech. I will have the links in the box. Um, I think it's called wing, Winged Things. So it's not just butterflies, it's birds and bees as well. I love the kit. It's beautiful and a little different for me because there's a little bit more, it's not, I guess it's a really pale cream color. It's not 100% white, but it definitely is lighter than I'm used to and I I don't want to coffee stain it because I believe my ink would run but I did print now this is from ephemeris vintage garden and I loved this I thought it went really well the coloring went really well so I just put uh, journaling lines on all of the pages don't I know Denise will love this page <laughs> bees I love it and I did the exact same one on all of them this one has the birds and there's your butterflies. More butterflies. Well, that's a moth, actually. But isn't that pretty coloring? Really love it. There's another bee. I like that there's a mix of colors. There's greens and pinks, and that's the last one. I'm probably going to be adding just tea-stained paper to this and probably some tissue paper which I want to uh, tea stain up first and uh, anyway I wanted to show you the pages so that's that I'll set those aside so this is how my Tyvek comes I've shown this before but it's an envelope style this is what you would find inside a security envelope um, that gets mailed so because it doesn't tear so I open up the bottom here first I have a video on just prepping your envelope for a cover, but you seem to like the start to finish, so I'm going to do that with all of my grace. <laughs> okay, that's open, and then you just simply pull it open here. It's just so I can get the best use out of the entire envelope. So I'm going to just cut that end part off so I have a somewhat straight bottom. 
It doesn't have to be perfect because you won't see it. And, you know, sometimes my cutter just does not like this. So I'm going to hand cut it. Probably because it's single. It'll cut when it's double. Okay, so I'll just get rid of that flap. And then I want it to be, hmm, what do I want it to be? Well, this is 13 inches, so, oh, I don't want it that. What am I talking about? I only want it in here. Um, crazy. I've only had two cups of coffee. Uh, okay, so let's see. What do I want it? Probably four inches wide should be good. So I think what I'll do is cut it first at eight inches because that's the height of my book. No, it's actually longer than that, I think. No, it isn't. It's less than that. This way, dummy. Okay. Yeah, eight and a half, I believe. Yeah, eight and a half. Okay. Let's see if it cuts. Yeah, see, it cuts when it's double thickness. It just doesn't like the single thickness. Okay, so then I'm gonna open it up. And then I want it. Well, I'll, I'll just cut it along that fold. That'll be plenty that it will give me. And my cutting skills are coming into play again. I'm just so good at this. <laughs> Let's see if it'll. Uh, not really. Kind of, sort of. Ah, uh, come on. Can you tell I love to cut? Okay, there's my piece. Now of this. So because I've opened the bottom part here, I don't want to open this part. I could to make life easier, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to, you know, do it like this, kind of open it up and guesstimate sort of. I'll just fold it in half and give it a crease. There is no up or down really. It doesn't matter. So that's going to fit in there, like so. And then, I wonder, yeah, that'll fit good. So when I cut this, this uh, piece out here, I went below my score line so that your side folds over easily. If you do it above the score line, then this is going to buckle like that. So you cut below the fold line so you can flip it up easy. Now, what I need is a brush. And get the water out of it. And again, I think I'll use my, what do I use today? Let's see. Let's just use up my, um, this one is Art Minds Decoupage. I also got this one at uh, Michael's. And uh, it works about the same. So instead of trying to put it in that and making a mess, <laughs> I'm going to use this and a scrap piece of paper. And then I'm just going to cover it. And again, you don't want it too goopy. But you don't want it too thin where it dries and then you end up not sticking. You do it over the scrap, you can go right over the edge and nothing to clean up. Just move your scrap away. Hard to see on the white um, that I have all of the spots covered. And we'll soon find out. 
Okay, get that out of the way. Bring this back. And now this is going to be a little bit of a guessing game. I do have it. Um, a little bit of a crease. Oh, I missed a spot. Okay. And just let's get that out of the way. I'm going to sort of slide it in there. And it, it does, you know, have a little bit of work room. It won't stick immediately. So you have time to sort of fix anything you might have gotten wrong. Now what I want to do is I'm going to take a piece of paper towel and I'm going to put it inside over top. And then I'm going to take my brayer and I'm going to brayer it down. a spot or two. I always do. Now I have not at this point decided whether I'm going to glue the whole thing down. If I do that, I'm pretty much guaranteed that I am going to miss spots. What should I do? I kind of think I really should and just do the best I can. But I think before I actually do that, I think the best thing to do is to put my, um, I should have before I did this, put my um, gesso on here. So I will try and smooth that out best I can. Where did I put my... There it is. I'll use my bone folder. I want that as smooth as I can without wrinkling the rest of it up. stuck that paper to there. Yep. Not badly though. It's still wet, so that's good. I just, I don't want to stick it down yet. That's why I'm taking this off. I know it will all make sense in the end. You're probably yelling at me going, no, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, that does look better. I'm going to uh, heat that up a little, start the drying process. A lot of what I do, you guys, is experiment. It's what I do, because I always feel that you just don't know unless you try. And if you try it and it doesn't work, oh well, it's an envelope that costs you about 10 cents, so not a big deal to me. Lots of things I salvage anyway. You can usually do something with them. So for those who haven't seen any of my videos or wondering what I'm doing. The reason I use Tyvek is to strengthen my seam here. So when I actually start my stitching, my thread or my twine or whatever it is I'm going to use won't rip through the envelope. I like to use the Tyvek. I know it does come on a roll with a sticky back. Um, I've never seen it here in Canada. so. If you have it, that's awesome, because I think that'd be a lot easier 
than doing it this way. However, I just go with what I have. I've gotten to that point where I have so many supplies that if I start a project and I don't have something, I don't go and get it. I improvise. It's just wasteful for me to not use what I already own. Okay, so there's my tie back. And now the next thing I want to do is uh, I want to put on my gesso. Gesso, for anyone who doesn't know, is what artists use to prepare their canvas to accept the paint better. Uh, gives it a tooth. Uh, also stops moisture from coming through. Let me just grab it. I didn't have it out. Oops, that's the wrong one. everything but my gesso of course oh here it is this is the last of my little thing I want to use this one up before I start on my other one I think I've got some in there that'll work um, and I need a brush and again <laughs> it's wet not a problem So there's not going to be much happening in this one, it's just the prep work. And I honestly don't have a clue what I'm going to be doing uh, with this journal. <laughs> You'll find out what I do. Now, if you're going to be using double-sided tape to adhere your papers down, you don't need to do this part. I don't use double-sided tape for the simple fact that it's really costly. It would take a lot of tape for me to be happy um, with the way it was laying down. I'm just going to spray some water in my um, gesso pot. It's getting a little on the dry side. As you can see, it's not a perfect thing. You just sort of slap it on. I want to move that, or I'm going to end up with gesso on my papers. I actually have a big desk, but very little work area it, because my desk is covered with stuff. You don't need to put it on as thickly as I have because mine is kind of um, thick. I think gesso is one of those things that you need to have in your craft supplies. You don't need an expensive one, um, but you can do a lot with gesso. I, I really love the effect of doing a real thin transparent uh, coat over book paper and then stamping on top of that. Really nice effect. Or putting it down on book paper and then uh, decoupaging a really pretty napkin over that. That's nice too. One of those versatile things. I have little fingerprints. Won't matter. Nobody will see them.
Okay, so that's good enough. Oops. <laughs> Very hard to hold when it's covered in gesso. Okay, I'm going to heat that up. Dry that. Okay, so the same as the last time, you guys. I'm going to stop it here. I'm going to finish prepping. You, you get the drift of what I'm doing here. So I'll finish prepping the envelope. I will have my papers cut. Um, I'm doing a cardstock on in, inside and outside. And then I'm not sure what I'm doing after that with the cover. But I do know I want to cover. I'm trying to use up my cardstock. So um, I've decided to start covering my inside and outside with uh, coordinating papers, not from any digital kit, just uh, coordinating papers, just to get them used up, and it will really um, strengthen my book. So I will, um, I will have this all glued down on the inside as well, you guys. I'm going to, you know, just slap on the uh, decoupage on the inside and then just give it a really good brayer to squish it to uh, every section and then make sure that that's nice and dry so when I come back the envelope itself will be prepped okay thanks for watching bye